This is a vehicle that overturned on the Massachusetts Turnpike and rolled over, ejected person and killed them. But when you look at this vehicle closely, the rear of the vehicle, the rear of the vehicle has been hit. And so officers, yes, the vehicle left the road. Yes, it put down a beautiful set of yaw marks, but what caused it to do that? Remember if when we first talked, we talked about causation. Well, here's a vehicle that went off the road. It did put down a beautiful set of yaw marks. It rolled over and ejected somebody, but the CSY calculation is out because of this impact with the rear of the vehicle. So in fact, this vehicle lost control not because of speed or inertia, but because it had been struck from behind. To mention tires, uh, my goodness, I think in many cases, police have a form that they work from that says, uh, document the tire pressure, document the, the type of tire, and all those kinds of things. But the pressure can be really important. If you have a slight damage to the tire, and let's say three weeks later that tire goes flat, all of a sudden, if you haven't documented at the scene what the tire pressure was, the defense now has the availability of saying, at the time of the crash, the pressure could be anything from completely deflated to correct inflation. And if they pick underinflated, it might open the door for a new, for a new defense. Rim damage, which could associate to a prolonged slow leak where the, the tire pressure changes over time. And of course, evidence of braking. And in this photograph, at the bottom of this tire, is what is called a skid patch. This tire has slid on the road surface for upwards of 150 feet. Rubber has been abraded onto the road. The heat of the friction has actually melted the tire. And this skid patch says, this vehicle recently underwent emergency braking. Every one of those tires might have that. All four of those photographs are great pieces of evidence. Because you know the juries all want CSI testimony. We haven't talked about CSI. But the juries love CSI. Well, this is CSI. This proves that this vehicle had its brakes locked up. And you know what? Each of the other tires does too. And if the defense happens to be that there was incomplete braking, or not all the tires were locked, and that would allow the vehicle to have a lesser friction factor, boy, here's the evidence that in fact they all were. So let's keep a heads up with the term to just tires and the amount of information to be available. Here is where a person slammed against the dashboard with their knees. And remember that I mentioned before, you might have a situation where their knees went up against the dash and some of this vinyl is now embedded in their clothing. Because when you press against that dashboard, it heats up. And when it heats up, it gets soft. Not unlike skating, when you stand on the ice, you heat it up. And when you heat it up, it gets soft. And you actually skate on the water that's in between the skate and the ice. And that's why the Zamboni has to come out at the end of the period and clear up all those little lines that are in the, in the ice. So here's a great piece of evidence, and we'd expect the passenger, front right seat passenger in this vehicle, to have a transfer, perhaps, of this vinyl, or leg injuries. With regard to the airbag, the airbag can have tremendous value in terms of forensic evidence. It can have blood or tissue or DNA evidence that might be invaluable in showing operation. But there are other kinds of evidence that can be a little, a little more troublesome, like blood spatter because we have to know where did the blood come from. And so officers, I just mentioned this to you. When you look in a vehicle, it's at rest. Make a mark on this bag someplace that tells you the position of this bag right now as you're looking at it. Because when you lift the front end up, if the wheels happen to turn back to normal, this bag is also going to rotate. And by the time that bag gets to the lab, it's now, the blood perhaps, is now in a completely different position than it was at the time of the crash. That's subtle. That's subtle. But you know, a good cross-examiner could make you admit, officers, that you don't really know where that bag was. Couldn't the wheel have turned? Couldn't the bag have been in a different position? Couldn't the blood over here on the right side have really been on the left side at the time of the crash? And you know what? Clay said it before. Sometimes you don't know. And when you don't know, you might have to concede. I don't know. And to a good defense attorney, that is a huge door to drive through. And finally, lamps. The lamps on the vehicle might be indication of whether the lamps were on or off, turn signals, headlamps, indicator bulbs, whatever. So, of course, in some of the newer lamps, like the LED lamps, we don't have indications. But in these older lamps that had filaments, we want to be looking at the lamps at the scene before we move the vehicle so that something doesn't happen during transport that actually creates evidence.
And I think those are just a couple things, Sandy, that might be helpful. All right, John.